Greetings to you viewers from across the globe. You're welcome to the show, Viewpoints, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. I'm your host, Odiawa AI. I do believe you're having a wonderful Wednesday. On the show today, we will be talking about the pensioners actually saving them from penury and who is denying them their benefits and gratuity, probably state governments or even the federal government. But first off, the headlines. First off, we'll begin with... Uh, Clark, who has actually faulted Tinubu on his imposed uh, settlements, and this is pertaining to the River State crisis. Now, Ijo leader Edwin Clark has said the eight-pointer resolution doled out on Monday to abolish the political crisis in River State was one-sided and unacceptable. Might we recall that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and other stakeholders converged on Monday with the River State Governor Fubara and his immediate predecessor. Yes, on Wiki, over the crisis in the states. They revealed the, they reeled out solutions to end the rift between po uh, both uh, political gladiators. Now, among other things, it was resolved that all matters instituted in the courts by the governor against Wiki and his team shall be withdrawn immediately. Now, a document that emerged after the meeting also mandated the state lawmakers loyal to Wike to halt all impeachment moves against Fubara. Now, reacting to the developments, Edwin Clark, an elder statesman, while speaking to journalists on Tuesday, spotted holes in the resolutions. Now, according to him, the resolution was aimed at handing over the political leadership of the state to Wike, the current minister of the Federal Capital Territory, the EFCT. He said that from the terms of the purported settlement, it was evident that Tinubu used his role as a mediator to show gratitude to the FCT minister for delivering River State to him during the last presidential uh, elections. Now, moving on to other matters still on River State, you are not above the party. We will soon sanction you. Now, this is PDP declaring a statement to Yeson Wike. The, Pres the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, has vowed to sanction the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Yeson Wiki, for going against uh, the party. Now, PDP Acting National Chairman Omar Damago disclosed this at a news conference in Abuja on Tuesday. Damago's remark followed the crisis in River State between Wiki and uh, Governor Fubara. The race between the duo had led to lawmakers of the PDP in the states defecting to the APC, the All Progressives uh, Congress. About seven commissioners had also resigned their appointments. Now, according, uh, aggrieved by rift over the control of political structure and finances of the states, President Bola Metunubu had made the duo ink down a peace accord after a meeting at the presidential villa in Abuja. Meanwhile, during the 2023 presidential elections, Wiki and the G5 governors had worked against the PDP's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. While Wiki worked for President Bola Tinubu, former Governor Samuel Otom of uh, Benue State worked for Labour Party's Peter Obi. Governor Shea Makinde of Oyo State also worked for Tinubu. However, Damago said all PDP members, now not exclusive to Yeson Wiki now alone, he said all PDP members working against the party's interests will also be sanctioned. Now, moving on to River State again, the news headlines making the rounds in the political space. No amount too big to pay for peace. Now, this is according to Fubara. Governor Siminai Fubara of River State has said there is no price too great for him to pay for peace to reign in River State, the Garden City. Ubara made this known while addressing a special convocation ceremony at the Pamo University of Medical Sciences, where he promised to abide by the truce brokered by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He and Yeson Wiki's feud split lawmakers in the House, with 27 of them defecting from the PDP to the APC, now a party in whose central government Wiki is currently serving as the FCT minister. Question marks should be raised therein. Now it was also it also saw nine commissioners of uh, Fubara's cabinet tendering their resignation, which is quite alarming. Now, still on River State, your first steps are correct. Now this is Odili to Fubara, 
Former Governor of River State Peter Odili says he is satisfied with the decision of Governor Similari Fubara since his inauguration in May. Dr. Odili made his uh, accession at the third convocation and sixth Founders' Day ceremonies of Pamu University of Medical Sciences, where he said the governor, according to him, has hit the ground running. A good chance begins with the first step, or rather, a good dance begins with the first step. Your first steps are actually correct. Now, these are the words of former governor ODB. This declaration is coming amid uneasy calm in River State as the rift between Yeson Wiki and Fubara splits lawmakers in the House with 27 of them defecting from the People's Democratic Party to the ruling uh, APC, a party in whose uh, central government, like I said earlier on, Wiki is currently serving. Now, it needed the intervention of the president to broker some level of peace between both parties on Monday. Dr. Odili, who was the governor between 1999 and 2007, expressed confidence that Governor Fubara will perform well, judging by his actions so far. He told the governor, who is the special visitor to the institution, that governance is not an easy business, but that his institution will continue to hold him in prayers to succeed well. Now, away from uh, River State, I haven't received allocations for six months. Now, this is according to Governor Philip Shaibu. Edo State Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu on Tuesday said he has not received the allocation to his office in the last six months. Nothing that he has been, uh, rather noting that he has been running the office on personal sacrifices and uh, goodwill. He stated this at the commissioning of the Secretariat of the Correspondence Chapel of uh, Edo State Council of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ, in Benin City. Present at the events include uh, personalities such as Anselm Ojezua, Osirame Osumbo, Matthew Rogide, who are also aspirants in the 2024 Edo gubernatorial race. Shaibu said he is an aspirant for the Edo State 2024 gubernatorial elections and that he would continue to identify with the media which saved his life under the military before the return to democracy in 1999. He reiterated further that his commitment to putting the state first and vowed to strengthening the institution responsible for putting him in power. Now, away from Edo State, Lalong uh, confirms resignation from Tinubu's cabinet, proceeds to the Senate. Uh, Ex-governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, on Tuesday, confirmed his resignation as Minister of Labor and Employment. Lalong said he officially tendered his resignation to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to enable him to take his seat as a senator representing, as a senator rather, representing Plateau South Senatorial District. In a letter submitted to the president on Tuesday, the minister reminded the president that after exhaustive legal processes, the Court of Appeal declared him as a duly elected senator representing Plato South Senatorial District and directed the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to issue him a certificate of return. Lalong said the decision for his resignation was not made lightly because of the trust and confidence that the president placed on him as a minister in his cabinet, having served as a DG Director General of the Tinubu Shetima Campaign Council, which delivered victory for the APC. I'm Odiawa AI for Visual Media, and the show is Viewpoints, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. Join me in the next phase of the show. You're welcome back to the show. The show is Viewpoint, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. I'm your host, Odiawa AI for Video Media. You do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Video Media, and follow us across various social media platforms. Don't forget to download the Video app on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. On the show today, we'll be talking about saving pensioners from penury. Now, when we've got uh, the Pension Transitional Agreement Directory, the PTAD, Pensions Fund Operators, PENOP, the National Pensions Commission, PENCOM, the Contributory Pension Scheme, which is a CPS. But it doesn't begin and end with establishing pension boards to address the needs of pensioners who have served the country. How effective and efficient are the nations or pensions boards in question here, which I've just mentioned earlier on? Now, against the pitiable situation of many public sector retirees, 
it is disheartening that most states in the nation are patently guilty of violating the statutory pension scheme. Reports indicate that out of the 36 states of the Federation, only six, including the FCT, have fully implemented the contributory pension scheme, and that at least 21 states owe as much as 790 billion naira inherited pensions and gratuities. Now, this is according to sources from the Vanguard newspaper. This certainly calls for urgent action considering the unacceptable situation to which retirees are, subject, are subjected to whenever they are denied their gratuities and pension here. It's also worrisome that almost 19 years, or for 19 years rather, after the federal government introduced the contributory pension scheme to address the plight of uh, ex-workers in the nation, most of whom have died while struggling to get their entitlements and a lot of others who are living in abject poverty their hardship has actually continued because most states have failed to give priority to payment of their benefits more lamentably also is that state governors who are supposed to ensure payment of these retirees benefits as that when due are freely collecting these pensions and other human goals are benefits that they award themselves and their deputies through deliberate laws, despite public criticism or outcry. While retired uh, workers continue to live in penury, this sad situation should actually be addressed. Employers have a responsibility of ensuring that after retirement, their ex-workers uh, do not turn to beggars or paupers, or rather face retirements that amounts to a death sentence for them. Uh, as part of our uh, pension reforms in the country, the CPS, the Contributory Pension Scheme, was actually introduced under the Pensions Reforms Act, the PRA of 2004, which repealed the Pension Act of 1990. As part of pensions reform in the country, the Contributory Pension Scheme was introduced under the Pensions Reform Act, the PRA 2004, which repealed the Pensions Act of 1990. One of the objectives of the PRA, which was adopted by the Federal Executive Council in August 2006 for the state and local government, was to establish a uniform set of rules, regulations and standards for administering and paying retirement benefits for the public and private sectors at the national and sub-national levels. Though subsequently, a model state pension law was developed for the states across the nation to adopt and modify to suit their peculiarities. Now, failure to pay retirees their benefits and pensions promptly has dire consequences for productivity, transparency, accountability, and morality in the civil service here. It should not be allowed to persist as it could spur sharp practices by the workers. Now, the second uh, quarter report of the National Pension Commission, PENCOM, for 2003 listed the FCT, Lagos, Ondo, Oshun, Kaduna, Edo and Ekiti states. They have actually fully implemented the CPS, the Contributory Pensions uh, Scheme. The report indicated that some states were at different uh, stages of implementing the CPS, while others continued with the old pension scheme called uh, the Defined Benefits Scheme. Now, Pencom, uh, reported, Pencom's uh, report revealed that Delta State was substantially implementing the contributory pension scheme, unlike Anambra, Benue, and Kebi, that were doing partial implementation. Now, as Rivers, Ogun, and Niger State extended their tran uh, transition period to the new scheme, Bayelsa, Kogi, Abia, Taraba, Imo, Sokoto, Eboin, Nasarawa, Enugu, Bauchi, and Oyo were yet to commence the implementation of the scheme. Pencom, according to Pencom, rather, said Jigawa was fully implementing the contributory defined benefit scheme, a hybrid of the DBS. Kano was partially doing so, while Adamawa, Gombe, and Zamfara have not started implementation. Uh, implementation. Now, this breakdown further showed that Plateau, Cross River, Bono, Akwaibom, Katsina, Yobe, Kwara, we're at the stage of actually adopting the CPS through bills in the legislative uh, houses. Now, indeed, retirees across the country are undergoing hardship as their employers are not giving priority to their plight, even when states claim to implement the contributory pension scheme. 
ex-workers actually getting their benefits as at when due. Now, food for thought. So there is need to wine and dine about this in our brains because, frankly speaking, in some states, pensions are being owed for upward of about 35 months. The backlog of gratuities is almost a forgotten case, while death benefits payable to next of kin of the deceased public servants are not even uh, mentioned. Now, in some of these states, retirees are reportedly being forced to part with percentage of their benefits, especially gratuity, before they are paid the balance. The bribe is extended to the gratuities of those that died in active service through their families seeking to collect the benefits. Now, truth be told, that's callous and cruel and unpardonable, if I may say, on the part of the civil servants who are actually involved in such uh, heinous acts. It is wickedness on the part of any government not to give priority to payment of entitlements of workers who actually died while in services and taking a cue from those who are in the military, particularly the junior ranking officers. They have, they have left children behind who actually be need to be fed. Some who have not completed school need school fees to complete their education. Now, some of them can't go naked. Now, their health also should be factored in. They need to be catered for. Now, in any sane society where leaders are not looters of the treasury and where public interest is the primary purpose of being in position of power, the entitlement of civil servants who died while serving the country should be paid without delay. Also deplorable is that many states that refuse to pay retirees have life pension laws in favor of uh, former governors and deputy governors, which ensure that the former political office holders maintain lives of uh, luxury through generous pensions and other benefits. Besides, some of the ex-governors are still in government as we speak, drawing pensions and other retirement benefits from the states they actually govern, just as they are also drawing salaries and allowances as, their, as sen seven senators rather, or ministers, while the retired civil servants of their states actually wallow away in destitution. Now, right before I draw the curtain on today's episode, for fairness sake, as a matter of responsibility, state governments should save the country from ridicule of their ex-workers becoming beggars, destitute and living miserable lives after serving their country as patriots, if I may put it that way, for the past uh, best part of their lives. Pension boards such as the pension commissions must wake up to its responsibility of ensuring that pensioners get what is actually due to them as at when due at the right time. I'm Odiawa AI for Video Media, and the show has been Viewpoints, where we discover perspectives and embrace dialogue. You'll do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Video Media, and follow us across various social media platforms. Don't forget to download the Vigil app on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Thanks for watching.